Okay, we have another integral. We've got something here from the UK integration B 2024, number five. We have the integral from zero to infinity, e minus x to the n plus one minus e to the minus two x to the n plus one, all over x dx. Okay, I've done a few problems already kind of similar to this. We had one where it was like, instead of having e to the minus x to the n plus one here, we had an arctan. We've done it with sines, we've done it with cosines. I think this one's probably the most similar to the arctan case. We'll kind of go over some of the details of that at the end. But what I want to do for this is just use Feynman's trick on it. So what I want to do is parameterize this. And you might want to break this into two integrals and just have like one of these over x. The only trouble with that, you can kind of do it that way, but the problem is individually these integrals will diverge. So what I want to do is actually parameterize the whole thing. And I'm going to create this new variable a on here. And I'm going to put that parameter on this one here. So how we'll do this, I'll write this as e minus, and then we'll bring in our a to the uh, a times x here. And then for this other one, we'll do something really similar. I'll just do this one. I could just leave it as two, but let's call it our, let's to try to make it more general, let's kind of create a b variable right here. But this b variable is just going to be a fixed constant, so that way we don't have to worry about the derivative of that and our function still just in terms of a. And then let's put a couple of conditions on this. I'm gonna say my A value needs to be greater than zero and my B value needs to be greater than zero. And next we'll go ahead and we'll differentiate this, but we'll differentiate with respect to A and we're doing this inside the integral sign. So we can do this as a partial over here, differentiating with respect to A. But when we do that, a couple of things are gonna happen. So first the one over X here, this is gonna be just a constant with respect to A. So I'm just gonna bring this all the way over here, which we're not gonna to need to, that's just a constant with respect to A. And then I also don't need to worry about differentiating this part because this is gonna be, again, a constant with respect to A. So the derivative of this is gonna be just zero. So what I need to do is we just need to differentiate this part right here. So we're differentiating E minus AX to the N plus one. So when I do this, let's rewrite. I'll bring the one over X over here. Derivative of this first, we're gonna get back the same thing. So we're gonna get back E minus AX N plus one. Then we need chain rule on this. Well, first we're gonna need power rule on all this. So when you differentiate that, you're gonna get minus n plus one ax, and then updating the power, we're gonna, that's gonna become an n. Now we need chain rule derivative of this with respect to a, that's just gonna be an x. But then I can cancel the x's here. I could take this minus sign, we'll just bring that up front of the integral here. And then with what's left here, this should be an integral we can do, because what I can do on this is we can do just a u substitution on it. If I, do my u for just this part right here. We're gonna be able to work, we're gonna be able to, the derivative of that's gonna be something like all the stuff we have over here. So now what we'll do is go ahead with this u substitution. I'm gonna make my u equal to everything over here. So we're gonna say u is gonna be ax to the n plus one. Take a derivative on this. First power rule, we're gonna get n plus one times a to the x to the n. And then chain rule, but now we're back differentiating with respect to x here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an a come out dx. Well, then what we have for our du is almost exactly what we have right here. I can just, I'm going to need this a right here. So let's multiply n and a, but I don't want to change it. So let's divide by a out front. And then we'll go ahead and substitute this. We have minus one over a in front. When you plug infinity in here, it's still going to infinity. You plug zero in, lower bound's going to be zero. This here is just going to become e minus u. Everything over here is du. And so this simplifies really nicely. Go ahead and integrate this. We have our minus one over a in front. Integral here is gonna be e minus u, but a minus sign's coming out, so I'll just use it to change this one to a plus, and we just need to evaluate this from zero to infinity. Plugging in infinity, this part's going to zero, so we have zero for our first part. Plug in zero, we have e to the zero is just one, so this is gonna become minus one over a. And so for our f prime a value, we're gonna have just minus one over a. But now at this point, we're gonna to wanna to get this back to f of a in order to get our goal, which is this thing right here. Just remembering that this thing here is the same thing as f of one, as we've got a one coefficient on the x right there. And this is gonna be true when our b value is two. So we'll say b equals two for our goal. So in order to do this, let's just integrate on both sides here, but integrate with respect to a on this. Well, then this is gonna be easy. We're gonna have here, that's just gonna be minus natural log absolute value a, but we have a greater than zero, so let's just drop the absolute value on that. And we have a plus c on it, and this is gonna be our f of a value. 
But in order to finish this, we're not gonna want this plus C value here. We need some way to deal with that. And what we can do is we can come back to our original integral and we can just notice that when the coefficient's the same, the whole thing's gonna be zero. So in the case where just A equals B, then for our F of A, we can just plug in a B here and see what happens for F of B. Then using this, we have minus natural log, plugging in for A, we're plugging in the B value, plus C, this is gonna need to be zero. And again, when we set this up, we set this up where B is a constant. So for this to be true, we need C to just be equal to natural log of B. So plugging this back in here for our F of A value, what we have is we end up with F of A is gonna be minus natural log A plus natural log of B. But with log properties, I can put these two things together and we end up with natural log of B over A. And so looking back at our original problem, what we did was we said our B value needs to be two. And then here we're saying our A value equals one. So plugging that back in here, our A value is one. We have F of one. It's just going to be natural log of b over a, 2 over 1. So for my solution, we just get natural log of 2. And so now the thing to notice about this is this is a good case of Frulani's integral. And you'll kind of notice it right here, because this is going to be basically part of the formula. Let's just look at that formula really quick. Okay, so looking at the formula, notice we got this in exactly the right form. We got the x. We got our, we're saying this part's going to be our f ax. This is going to be our f bx. And then we get that similarity right here with the natural log. Now you notice the difference right here, it's natural log A over B, here it's natural log B over A. Well, you just look what happens when our X values go into infinity. In this case, this is gonna be going to zero, so we'd have a zero here. You look at what happens when our X value is zero, e to the zero, this is gonna be just one. Zero minus one, it's just gonna be minus one. Bring that in the exponent and you flip this and you get natural log of B over A, which is our solution right here. So actually, if you were in a hurry, you could go right to the formula on this and solve it really quick. The thing to look out for is the problem I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which we've seen before, is if our function is something with sine or cosine. In that type of case, the f affinity is not going to exist because there's no limit of sine of x, say, when x is going to infinity. So that's why for those other ones, we had to do a slight variation. But it actually worked fine for arctan. If we had something with arctan, then like this is pi over 2 and this is 0. And so the formula worked fine in that case. Anyway, there you go. Good one today from UK Integration B 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.